This video will explore the formation of standing waves in pipes. The different standing wave patterns that can exist in pipes under three different boundary conditions will be examined, namely pipes with two open ends, two closed ends, and one closed and one open end. We will then discuss the concept of resonant lengths in pipes for a given frequency of sound. We will first consider a pipe of length L, which is open on both ends where the orange dots represent air particles in the pipe. In contrast to strings, the standing waves formed in pipes are longitudinal waves. When the wave reaches the open end of the pipe, it is partially reflected back. This is because the open end acts like a change in medium, where the air inside the pipe is more restricted in movement compared to the air outside of the pipe, which is exposed to the atmosphere. This is the reflected wave that superposes with the incident wave travelling down the pipe, leading to the formation of standing waves. The air particles at the open ends of the pipe can flow freely in and out, so the particles can oscillate with maximum amplitude. The open end acts similar to a free end on a string, and so the wave reflects back with no phase change, and the open end of a pipe is always an antinode of the standing wave. With an antinode at each end, these boundary conditions place very specific restrictions on the wavelengths and frequencies of standing waves that can be produced in an open pipe. This is the foundation to how sound is produced in wind instruments such as flutes and other woodwind instruments. In this animation, the particles in the middle of the pipe here do not oscillate at all, because the incident wave and reflected wave are always in antiphase so these particles are located at a node. Furthermore, this animation shows the longest wavelength of standing wave that can be formed with antinodes at each end, so this represents the first harmonic. Successive antinodes are spaced half a wavelength apart, so the wavelength of the first harmonic is twice the length of the pipe. Since wave speed is equal to frequency multiplied by the wavelength, we can also calculate the frequency of the first harmonic. Note that the standing wave is a longitudinal wave as shown by the orange dots. A useful way to represent the longitudinal wave in this animation is through the use of a transverse wave shown in black, which shows the horizontal displacement of the air particles from their equilibrium positions. The second harmonic has two nodes and three antinodes, where exactly one wavelength fits in the pipe and it has a frequency that is double the frequency of the first harmonic. Similarly, the third harmonic has a frequency that is three times the frequency of the first harmonic. In particular, a pipe that is open at both ends behaves the same as a string with two free ends, as discussed in the previous video. We find that the allowed wavelengths and frequencies for the nth harmonic in an open pipe satisfy the same relationships as the allowed harmonics on a string with two free ends, where n represents the number of the harmonic, and this time l represents the length of the pipe. In addition, the number of the harmonic can give us the number of nodes in a pipe that is open at both ends. We will now briefly look at a pipe that is closed at both ends. When reflection takes place at a closed end of a pipe, the air particles next to the closed end are unable to be displaced, so they are effectively fixed in place, analogous to the fixed end of a vibrating string. This results in a reflected wave with a 180 degrees phase difference to the incident wave. This means that standing waves formed in this pipe will have a node at each of the closed ends, and they will behave the same as standing waves on a string with two fixed ends, as discussed in the previous video. Hence the harmonics in a closed pipe of length L will satisfy the following properties where the nth harmonic has n plus 1 nodes and n antinodes. If we now look at standing waves in a pipe which is closed on one end and open on the other end, there must be a node at the closed end and an antinode at the open end. The first harmonic and the third harmonic are shown in these animations and we find that they behave in the same way as standing waves on a string with one fixed end and one free end. Under these boundary conditions, only odd harmonics of standing waves can exist in a pipe that is closed at one end. 
In addition, the harmonics must satisfy these expressions where n has to be an odd integer greater than zero. So far, we have found the different frequencies of standing waves that will be allowed for a pipe of a certain length. We will now examine the scenario where the frequency is kept fixed and we look at the lengths of pipe that produce standing waves for that given frequency. Consider a pipe that is partially filled with water that is open at one end and closed at the other end. A tuning fork can be used to produce sound waves of a particular frequency. So suppose that we now hold a vibrating tuning fork near the open end of a pipe and we slowly drain the water out of the pipe. As this happens, the length of the column of air increases and we find that the volume of the sound increases sharply at very specific lengths. The increased loudness is due to the repeated reflections of the wave from the water surface and the open end of the pipe interfering constructively with the waves from the tuning fork. This results in the formation of standing waves at those lengths, which causes the sound wave in the air in the pipe to resonate. So these lengths are known as resonant lengths. We have the boundary conditions of an antinode at the open end of the pipe and a node at the surface of the water, as this is a change in medium and so this acts like a closed end of a pipe. The shortest pipe in which resonance can occur is called the first resonant length and occurs at this length here. The standing wave will look like this and hence the first resonant length occurs when the length of the air column is equal to a quarter of a wavelength. The second resonant length occurs at a length of three quarters of a wavelength and the third resonant length occurs at five quarters of a wavelength. So half a wavelength is added to each subsequent resonant length. The same analysis can also be applied if we varied the length of a pipe with two open ends. Resonant lengths are the reason why musicians can change the frequency of the note produced by a flute by opening or closing the holes on the flute. This effectively changes the length of the vibrating air column inside the flute which in turn results in a new frequency being heard, a note for which the new length is a resonant length. Let's apply this understanding to an example question. A 500 Hz tuning fork is held above an open pipe that is partially submerged in water. Given that the speed of sound is 340 meters per second, Calculate the distance that the pipe needs to be raised in order to hear two successive resonances. Let's begin by illustrating the problem as follows. We are interested in any two successive resonances, so we shall consider the first and second resonant lengths which are shown here. The first resonance occurs at a quarter of a wavelength, and the second resonance occurs at three quarters of a wavelength. Therefore, we will hear the two resonances after the pipe is raised a distance of half a wavelength. All we need to do now is find the wavelength. We are given the frequency and the speed of sound, so the wavelength can be found through rearranging this equation, giving a value of 0.68 meters. Then the distance that the pipe needs to be raised is equal to the wavelength divided by 2, which has a value of 0.34 meters. We will now provide a final summary of the key understandings from this video. Standing waves in pipes are longitudinal waves and are formed from the reflections of waves at the ends of the pipe. Open ends of pipes are antinodes, while closed ends of pipes are nodes. So these boundary conditions restrict the wavelengths and frequencies that can be formed. For a pipe of length L that is either open at both ends or closed at both ends, the allowed wavelengths and frequencies of harmonics satisfy the same relationships for a string that is free at both ends or fixed at both ends. Similarly, only odd harmonics can form in a pipe with one closed end and one open end, and they satisfy the same relationships for a string with one fixed end and one free end. Finally, if the frequency of sound waves is kept constant, Pipes can resonate at specific lengths, known as resonant lengths, whereby the volume of sound increases sharply at these lengths. This now concludes our video about standing waves in pipes. Thank you for watching.